Hallelujah. We just bless God for this worship that we're coming out of in the name of Jesus. Hey, we still saying the devil is a liar and God is exalted. We got our PowerPoint up already, and we are getting this live set up. We are welcome, welcoming our Revelation Church Facebook family, our social media family, and I'm getting this thing together in Jesus' name. Getting Pastor Jason connected up here. And we're going to move. Amen. Amen. Good evening to Revelation Church. Hallelujah. We're going to definitely be doing a continuation of the green screen effect. Amen. But we just bless God um, that even in prayer and in worship, um, we were singing this song that because God is the greatest power, we shall never be defeated. And I just thank God for that revelation that um, no matter what things that we go through, no matter what things the enemy tries to put in front of the green screen, we know that we shall never be defeated in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. But we're going to go ahead and move tonight. Um, because we're going to dive deeper into the series that we started last week with about the green screen. I just thank God for, even as I was studying, um, the things that he was just breaking open and the Holy Spirit was just revealing um, different things where the green screen effect is concerned. And just, just giving revelation. You know, giving revelation to different things in the word of God. So I just bless God for being able to really dive into the word of God and to study. And we must study the word of God. But it's, it's just amazing that each and every time we go back, it's scriptures that I've read for years and years and years that the Holy Spirit just breaks open new things and reveals new things. And um, he makes all things new. So I just bless God for that in Jesus name but we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive in we have our green screen back up from last week amen and I just thank God um, that we're just going to do a quick review about what the green screen is all about um, last week we just talked about how um, what a green screen actually was and in the acting world they use a green screen whenever they're trying to create images that, actually, that aren't actually there. So, for instance, um, you can, they can be trying to record a scene that's in the Alps. Well, they can be recording it right here in the hotel, and they'll record a person in front of the green screen. So, say, for instance, I'll be standing in front of the green screen, and they'll record me acting like I'm skiing down the mountains. I don't know. Do people ski on Alps? I don't know. When well, the Alps, I have no idea. But <laughs> I don't. Yes. And y'all probably don't, but you know somebody who does. And they'll be acting like they're scared, and I'll be doing all this, and I'll be doing all this, and they'll record me doing all these actions. And then what they'll do is, after they've already recorded the person, they will slide. They'll, they'll be recording me in front of the green screen, but then they'll go ahead and they'll slide um, the Alps, the background, the picture. They'll slide it on behind. And so the green screen, what we already know is that it's when you see things that aren't actually there. And we talked about last week about how the enemy tries to fool us in that way, about how the enemy tries to put fear in us in that way by showing us images throughout our lives of things that aren't actually there. And so we're going to dive deeper into that tonight. 
Of course, every time I try to get started, my keynote remote, uh, for whatever reason, shuts down and it's doing it now. I'm going to reconnect it real quick and we're going to move because I put this PowerPoint together so I want y'all to see these images. I want y'all to have this visual. So give me one second. I'm going to connect this right back because it does it every time, but it's all good. We already know the devil is a liar. That's right, Carter. God is exalted, that's right. It did the same thing last week. It worked and worked and worked, and then as soon as it came time for me to use it, it shut down, but it's all good. We're going we gonna to reconnect it real quick. I'm going to reconnect it on my end. And we're going to get this thing going. We're going to make it back up. We're getting connected, we're getting connected. Listen, the devil is a liar. He's trying to get me every week with that. But this time, I got it. <laughs> I had to learn how to work this keynote thing out. And um, I thank God for Pastor Jason for being patient with me, for trying to teach me how to um, connect my phone to the keynote and all that great stuff so that it can flow and I can see what I'm talking about and I can flow with everything that we've learned. All right. So tonight... We're going to we're going to dive deeper into the green screen effect. Um, we already discussed last week about us wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, and and pretty much um, we we dived into uh, the wiles of the enemy and how we wrestle against, we wrestle not against flesh and blood and how we need to be um, informed on the wiles, the tactics, the schemes, the things that the enemy uses. And so we dived into that last week. And so we're just going to go deeper um, into how we equip ourselves and how we gird up tonight. And so that was even what we titled our Facebook Live, um, The Green Screen Effect, but we are titling it heard up, because that's what we're going to dive into. We're going to go deeper into Ephesians 6. Um, we know that he, we know his wiles. We discussed that last week, what the wiles of the devil, the things that he uses, deception. Um, he uses illusions. He tries to use people. Um, he uses situations. He uses your job. Sometimes he even can use your children. He uses all these tactics and schemes against you to get you off focus, to get you distracted from what things, the things that God has called you to do. And so we realized that in knowing his wiles, even though we know his wiles, that's the crazy thing about the green screen effect, we already know that it's a fixed fight. We already know that it's a fixed fight. We already know that we're victorious. We know that Christ, he's already defeated the enemy. So even knowing that it's a fixed fight, sometimes we still react. And so as I was studying, um, the Holy Spirit just illuminated something to me, and I started to imagine um, uh, what you call those 3D VR glasses, and you know how you'll, you have seen these videos, or sometimes they'll have these uh, 3D machines in the middle of the mall. And you can put on these, these glasses. And when you put on these glasses, and they're, they're some really thick glasses. Matter of fact, I think I have an illustration here. Here we go. You put on these 3D glasses, and pretty much what happens is it's virtual reality. So it's, it's not real. It's a virtual reality. And so 
When you put these glasses on, what happens is it'll show these videos and images before you. And I don't know if you all have ever seen these videos, but they're really funny. If you go to YouTube and you look at these videos of people in the middle of the mall, and they'll have these glasses on, and they'll be reacting to what they see in front of them, but they're the only ones who can see it. And they'll be reacting to everybody else around them in the middle of the mall is looking at them like, what are they doing? So even in this picture, my man here with the glasses on, he is, looks like he's ducking, trying to get bit by a dinosaur, and he's look like, looks like he's a UFO or some crazy stuff over here. But he's ducking, trying to get bit by a di from getting bit by a dinosaur. But how many know that there aren't any dinosaurs out, there's no dinosaurs walking the earth, so guess what, it's not real. So essentially what he's doing is he's reacting to something that isn't real. I said, okay, Holy Ghost. We know that it's only an illusion. And it's just like that 3D game when you put on those VR glasses. Um, and I watch some of these videos on YouTube and it's like, I don't know what images are in front of them, but sometimes people are jumping, they're screaming, they're ducking like he's doing. They're doing all these things and then it's all these people surrounding them in the middle of the mall just standing there laughing, looking at them because they look so crazy because they're reacting. They're exerting all of this energy into an illusion, something that's not even real. So that's sometimes how we can look when the enemy tries to throw these images before us in front of our green screen. Um, what you do is you start to react, you start to exert all of this energy, you start to put all of this time into something that's not even real. And it's crazy because we already know that Christ has won the battle, but we still, we still, we still, we still, we still react. And that's what he wants. It's a trick to get you out of focus, to get you off focus, to get you distracted from the things that God is really saying. And this takes us right back to Ephesians 6 and 12, which is what we, um, which is what we started with last week. Um, Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So what happens is you, you start to get off course. And you start to get your attention diverted. And a diversion is an instance of turning something aside from its course. Once you divert your attention to the illusion that the enemy has placed in front of the green screen, it causes you to now exert energy on something that doesn't even matter. You now have begun to focus and deal with the fruit instead of the root. You now start to deal with the fruit instead of the root. We're going to dive into that. We're going to dive into that. What does that mean, dealing with the fruit instead of the root? It says Lady Sonya Taylor at the bottom because it says something like Johnny Appleseed. It has some quotes that Johnny Appleseed, and I'm definitely not Johnny. I'm Lady Sonya, so I threw my name up there, amen. <laughs> but what does that mean when you deal with the fruit instead of the root? Um, the enemy with the green screen effect, like I said, he, he just shows us a picture. But just like the scripture, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, the reason why we don't wrestle against flesh and blood is because no matter what you see before you, what flesh and blood is doing, how they're acting up, how they're cutting up, that's not the root cause. And so that's why the Bible tells us we don't even, we don't even wrestle against them. We're not even dealing with that because you have to understand that everything in the spirit realm is cause and effect. It's cause and effect. There is something in the spirit realm that is causing an effect in the natural realm. And so that's what it means when we say dealing with the fruit instead of the root. That's just like, um, let's just say you try to kill an apple tree. How would you kill an apple tree? You don't go to the apple tree and start burning the apples. You don't go to the apple tree and say, if I pluck every apple off of this tree, I'm going to kill this apple tree. That makes no sense. You don't take the apples and throw them in the fire. Why don't you do that? You don't do that because that would be dealing with the fruit. How many know if you want to kill an apple tree, 
you have to destroy the root. You can not only deal with the fruit. That's also like um, when I was diving deeper, the Holy Spirit was like, look at weeds. And I'm like, I know we, about weeds very well. I've, I've been a homeowner for almost five years now, and I don't deal with anything outside in my flower bed, in my garden, or anything. But Lord Jesus, at McMahon Plaza, we got some weeds that are out of this world. I mean, they are, they some, those are some devil weeds. And I'm telling you, we can go out there, well, not me personally. I say we collectively, but not me personally. I don't go out there. But we might pay somebody or um, my sister and I, our husbands might go out there and they will like try to pull up these weeds and then literally it will rain that same night and the next day the weeds are back. <laughs> and that's because we haven't dealt with the roots. The roots have not been destroyed. So therefore, they'll, they'll grow back sometimes even in one day. Let's just look at something else when it comes to cause and effect. In the beginning, even in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. God had to speak a thing in the Spirit. That was the root, and then the fruit manifested in the earth. Everything that we see in life Situations that happen, circumstances that arise, financial issues, financial problems, all of those things have a root cause. All of those things, something starts in the spirit realm. And then, because of that root thing that started in the spirit realm, it manifests in the natural realm. Amen? Amen. Even as I was studying, and this may not be a popular phrase or sentence that I'm about to use, but the Holy Spirit broke this open to me as I was studying. He said, even in voodoo, the terminology that people use, they say somebody put a root on you. <laughs> even if they're, when they're trying to cast spells or whatever, I don't know much about voodoo at all. I don't want to know much about it. Um, because it's evil. But that's even some of the terminology that they use. They'll say, oh man, somebody put a root on you. Not on me, on you. Somebody put a root on you. And so it's just going to show, again, that cause and effect. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Because guess what? The flesh and blood... That's, that's not the root cause. So to wrestle against them, it's crazy because it would cause us to exert energy into something that's not even real. It's a green screen. It's a green screen. It's the green screen effect. It's not real. The flesh and blood, half the time, they don't even know why they're cutting up. They don't even know why they're acting up. They're being used to the enemy. Um, they're being used by demonic forces. And half the time, they don't even know why they do what they do. But there is a root cause. And we're going to learn tonight what to do to equip ourselves to fight, but to fight against the root and not fight against the fruit. Amen? Amen. And so what we're going to do is continue to dive into the word of God. Ephesians 6, 13 and 14 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now tonight we're going to dig into this line here. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. That's what we're going to deal with. Because guess what? The main way, the only way to defeat the enemy is with the truth. And we all know that the truth is the word of God. Amen. So we're going to dig into how we gird our loins with the belt of truth. Now I want y'all to focus on my guy right here. <laughs> I went to Google and I found me a good soldier. Hallelujah. This is um, just showing an illustration of the armor of God. And tonight we're going to dig into this piece right here, the belt of truth. Amen. The belt 
of truth. The belt of truth is the first piece of the armor of God. It's the first piece that's listed in scripture. And of course, we know that God is God of order. So we know that it's a reason why these pieces of armor, which we're going to dive into over the next couple of weeks. But tonight, like I said, we're going to deal with the belt of truth. But God is a God of order. And it's a reason why these things were listed in a certain order. So there is a very strategic reason as to why the belt of truth is first. The belt of truth is first. I'm gonna answer. The, I'm gonna ask the question, and I'm gonna answer the question for the second time. Amen. Does anybody know why the belt of truth is first? I do. <laughs> do you know? Do you know, Robbie? Oh, I guess the belt of truth is first because that's what comes first when God wants us to do. He wants us to tell the truth and not lie. Amen. Tell the truth and not lie. Glory to God. Yes. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Go, Carter. That's right. Look, that's one of my scriptures. Um, it's actually the next scripture that I have. So, um, Carter's flowing in the, in the vein, and uh, Deacon Robbie is flowing in the vein. The vein. Amen. I praise God for the children. The belt of truth is first, because without truth, we are lost, and we will surely fall prey to the wiles of the devil. The green screen effect will overtake us. Without the truth, we have nothing. Without the truth of the word of God, we have nothing. We have nothing to fight the devil with. And this is just another illustration, just, so, just showing the pieces broken up and not actually on the soldier's body. But again, um, this is the belt of truth here. So that's the illustration of the belt of truth. It doesn't look like, um, it doesn't look like our belts. It looks a little different, and this is the the way that the Roman soldiers, this is the way their armor looked back in the day when this was written, when the word of God was written. Back in the day. Amen. My scripture, John 14 and 6, what Carter just illuminated. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the truth, the absolute truth. Um, it's other scriptures in the word of God on truth. Many, many scriptures in the word of God on truth. John 17 and 17. Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. Again, the, word, the, the Bible is letting us know that the Bible, the word of God, is the truth. John 8, 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 16 and 13. How be it, when he... The spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. And that's the Holy Spirit. We know that he is the spirit of truth. He will lead and guide you into all truth. Amen. So again, this picture here is just showing the belt of truth. So the belt in, back in Paul's day, it was, it was not just a simple leather strap or one of those fake Gucci belts that everybody's wearing now, you know, with the, with the double G's. I'm not saying everybody's is fake, but if you bought it for $39.99, it might be a, a Gucci, not a Gucci. But this <laughs> is just a picture of the Belt of Truth. And even as I was looking at it, I was like, okay, I like the little tassels and everything. I like it. I like it. It was a thick, heavy leather with a metal band. So that's what you see there, the metal band. And a protective piece hanging in front. And that's these little tassels. I call them tassels. They're, they're not tassels, but I call them tassels because... Fashionista over here. But that's the way, or that's a depiction of what the belt would have looked like. A metal band with a protective piece hanging in front. The belt held the soldier's sword and their other weapons. And when I was reading that, when I was studying about the pieces of the armor and I was looking at the pictures, when I read that, I'm like, wow, the belt held the sword, and the other pieces of the armor. And something really, really jumped out at me. The belt holds the sword. Yes. Without the truth of God's word, you're going into war without a weapon. 
So the question was asked last week we, when we were diving into the green screen. I waited until the end of Bible study, and we had some questions come forth, and somebody asked a question. And it was a very, very good question, and I said that we were going to dive into it this week. It was a very good question. And the question that was asked is, in the armor of God, what's the difference between the belt of truth, which is the word of God, the truth is the word of God, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God? And when I went into prayer and I started studying, I was like, okay, Lord, so what's the difference? What's the difference between the belt of truth, which the truth is the word of God, which is what we're learning, and what's the difference between the sword of the spirit, which is also the word of God. The belt holds the sword. Without the truth of God's word, you're going into war without a weapon. What does this mean? The belt secures the sword to you. That's why the word of God says to gird up your loins. So guess what? The word of God is available to you at all times. You can find a Bible anywhere. You can find a Bible in Walmart. You can go to the hotel, open up the drawer. There's a Bible there. You can go to your phone. You can download hundreds of Bible apps for free. You can Google a scripture. The word of God is available to you. However, if you don't pick it up and use it, what good will it do you? If you don't have any truth to combat the enemy with, what good will it do you? The word of God says to gird up your loins. Gird is an action word. It's gird or gird. What does that mean? Gird up. Gird or gird. G-I-R-T or G-I-R-D, depending on the translation. To gird, to make something such as clothing or a sword Fast or secure, as with a cord or belt. Gird a sword by a belt. Now, this is Webster's. I talked to y'all last week about how Pastor Jason, he doesn't ever want to concede and, and admit that I won our little debates and things like that. <laughs> Unless I look up the definition and it's Webster's definition. So this is Webster's. Webster says, to prepare oneself for action. My God. To gird one's loins means to muster up one's resources. That thing hit me because I was like, man, the word of God, that's a resource right there. I mean, everything that you can encounter in life, everything that you may have a question about when you're in the valley of decision, guess what? It's in the word of God. <laughs> Your answer is in the word of God. We need to learn how to muster up one's resources. We have the resources, but are we girding up? My God, my God, this thing is getting good to me. Webster, he got me good with those definitions. Gird up, gird up. So to answer the question that was asked last week. What's the difference between the belt of truth, again, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God? The belt of truth is to prepare you for action. You cannot use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, without first preparing for action. Here we go. Come on, slide. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Again, the belt of truth is to prepare you for action. You cannot use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, without first preparing it for action. How can you use a weapon without first having preparation? That's just like, um, we don't really use many swords now in modern day, but we use guns. And so even when you're going into action with a gun, when you're preparing to use a gun in the military, when they're um, sending you out with a gun, they don't send you out without training. They won't even, I'm not sure of this, but it would make sense to me that they won't even um, give you a gun license or whatever. I don't like guns, but they won't even give you a gun license without you first having some type of training. You have to go to the shooting range and, and shoot those little uh, posters that look like a man, and you, you go to the shooting range and you shoot those. That's preparation. That's preparation. They don't send you 
on the front line um, in the military of battle without first giving you some sort of preparation on how to use your weapon. It's the same way in the spirit. So like I told you, in the spirit realm, it's parallel to things in the natural realm, okay? There's always a root cause before you see the fruit. You have to be prepared for battle. You cannot use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, same thing as the belt of truth, which is the truth of the word of God, without first preparing for action. How are you preparing for action? You're girding up. How are you girding up? You're filling your heart and mind with the word of God. Even the word of God says, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Hey, guess what? Sometimes things come up in life and you're like, what's the right thing to do? Should I do this? Should I not do this? What's going on? Yes, the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. But you have that scripture to pull from to say, wait a minute. The word of God says this. So let me not do that because that will cause me to sin. But I don't always have time to Google, huh? I don't always have time to Google. When I hide his word in my heart, the word of God said when it's hidden in my heart, that's how I won't sin against God. That's how you gird up. You hide his word in your heart. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Somebody say gird up. No, I need to say it loud. Somebody say, gird up. Gird up. Gird up. The sword is something that you can't use being unprepared. While you may think that you're about to use it on your enemy or your opposer, without preparation, the weight of the sword just may take you down. My God. We're going to dive deeper into that later on into the study when we get to the sword of the spirit. But you, you all are going to be surprised about how much the sword actually weighs. The sword is not something that you should take lightly. You can't just be swinging and, and building and yielding a sword. It's actually got some weight to that thing. Even guns have a little weight to them. You got different types of guns, different things. And I'm just, I'm just saying guns only because that's the modern day weapons that we use in the natural. But... Even guns have a certain weight to them. So girding up, essentially, is you getting your weight up. Ha! You got to get your weight up to be able to use the sword of the spirit. And that's what girding up with the belt of truth does. You gird up. Amen, amen, amen. Also, the belt actually secures all of the other pieces of armor. We're going to dig deeper into that. I'm telling you, we're going to dig deeper into that. The truth should cleave to us as a belt cleaves to your body. And this is the reason why the belt of truth was listed first as a part of the armor of God. I'm going to go back to our picture and we'll come back to that slide. This is why the belt of truth was listed first, because it cleaves to us. And we need the truth of the word of God to cleave to us, just as the belt is cleaving to our waist. Ha. Huh. This is why deception is dangerous. That's that green screen again. Deception is dangerous. The truth of the word of God, the belt of truth, will keep us from falling prey to the green screen effect. But guess what? That's only if we gird up. You have to gird up. Yes, it's available to you, but you've got to gird up. His promises, his promises which are found in the word of God, God's promises, they are true. There's that truth again. There's that truth again. His promises are true. We always talking about we always talking about, I'm always talking about, the devil is a liar. <laughs> we say it all the time. Somebody come to me with something, they like, girl, mm -mm. I ain't even going to repeat stuff folks be trying to drop in my spirit. And I, I quickly say, the devil is a liar. <laughs> and it's just become a part of our terminology. And it's true. And I know a lot of people say, oh, don't, don't keep talking about the devil. Don't give him no glory. No, no, no. I'm not giving the devil any glory. When I say the devil is a liar, I'm declaring something that's true. He is a liar. 
And then it also reminds me, I'm reminding myself that he is in fact a liar. So therefore, if my thoughts don't line up with the word of God, then I know it's a lie. So as we're girding up our loins with the word of God, with the belt of truth, I was digging deeper in my study, digging deeper in my study, and I came across 1 Peter 1 and 13. It says, wherefore, gird up. There it is again. Somebody say, gird up. Gird up. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. That stuck out to me. Wow, wow, wow. Be sober. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What in the world does gird up the loins of your mind mean? The word of God speaks about having the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word of God speaks about having the mind of Christ. And so we have to even gird our minds up with the word of God. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. How do we have the mind of Christ? How do we know what was in his mind? How do we know? Guess what? We know through the word of God. So it all comes back around full circle. That's how we know. When we gird up our loins and when we gird up our mind, the word of God says to be sober. That's how we fight. That's how we know the mind of Christ. The word of God tells us that Jesus even used the word of God against the enemy. This is how we fight our battles. I like this song. This is how we fight our battles. Y'all know the song? This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. That's right. This is how we fight. This is how we fight. We gird up. And this is just part of it. We're going to dig into the rest of the armor of God later, but this is just part of it. This is how we fight our battles. Even Jesus did. He used the word of God against the enemy. Jesus said, it is written. This was in Matthew 4, 4 through 7. I'm just going to read it. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, the belt of truth, the word of God that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil, he took Jesus. He tried to tempt Jesus. He taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time you dash your, your foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, and this is Jesus saying unto the devil, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Guess what? Jesus was girded up. <laughs> and that's, how we, that's who we're supposed to be following after. That's who we're supposed to be mimicking. He was girded up, and he was girded up with the belt of truth. He had his mind girded up with the word of God, and that's how he was able to defeat the enemy. So even when the enemy came to put a green screen, even for Jesus to try to use the green screen effect on him, Jesus let him know, it is written. It is written. And that green screen effect, it didn't work. It did not work. And so... This is just the beginning, the first piece of the full armor of God that we just um, have talked about. This is just the first piece to show you, to teach you, to equip you how to fight, to show you, to teach you, to equip you how to not fall prey to the tricks of the enemy that he puts before us. It's nothing but a green screen. It's nothing but an illusion. It's nothing but a diversion. And it's just to get us off track. When we take our time fighting people, fighting situations, um, you know how Pastor does his popping off, you know. Did I do it like did I do it like Pastor Jason? No, no? Okay, let me let me track it, let me check it. Anyway, a little bit? Okay, okay, Robbie said I'm almost there, I'm almost there. The popping off, when we have these reactions 
to the things that the enemy puts before us. We, we don't use up all this energy fighting fruit instead of going back and finding the root cause, which is principalities, again, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so as we keep diving deeper into the green screen effect and as we continue to study Ephesians 6 and it's showing us how to gird up, to gird up, I hear you say gird up. Gird up. That's right. As it continues to show us how to gird up we are going to defeat the enemy. We're going to defeat these principalities. We're going to defeat these powers, the rulers of the darkness of the world against the spiritual wickedness in high places. And it's really because Christ, he's already won the victory. He's already, the devil is already defeated. He's a liar. So even when he tries to tell you that you have these issues, that you have these problems, when he puts these images before you, when he tries to deceive you, he, guess what? He's already defeated. We already won. So we also need to learn how to carry on as though we already have the victory. But guess what? A good soldier, a good soldier still has his armor. He's still equipped. And so that's what we wanted to dive into tonight, the belt of truth. So I need y'all to say it one more time for me. Gird up. Gird up. Oh, thank you, Carter. Thank you, Robbie. Gird up. That's right. And I just bless God for everything that he's illuminated tonight, for girding up. I'm going to put my gird up slide back on. And um, I want you all to just keep that in mind as you're going throughout the rest of your week, as you're going into next week. I want you to keep in mind that you must gird up. When the enemy tries to bring these images to you, gird up. When they, and really and truly, you need to be girded up prior to. Because when you're already girded up, when you're already ready, when he comes, you're ready for that thing. you like, but guess what? It is written. <laughs> you can just go ahead and just let him know, hey, this is not the truth of the word of God. My mind is girded up. My heart is girded up with the word of God. And I'm ready to use the sword of the spirit, which we're going we gonna to dive into the sword of the spirit. But next week, we're really going to um, we're going to move on to the next piece of the armor. And we're going to do things in order, because like I said, God is a God of order. He's a God of divine order. And so he listed the pieces in a certain order for a reason. And so even though um, we started, even though we started with the belt of truth, um, the next piece that's listed in scripture is the breastplate of righteousness and that's what we're going to dive into next week but I just want to bless God tonight amen for this study on the belt of truth I want to just give God praise glory and honor for Revelation Church just for the support I want to bless God for our Facebook family I want to give honor to Pastor Jason even in his absence um, and I just bless God for just trusting me with the job and the task to um, teach on Pathways on Thursday nights, teach at Pathways. It definitely was not my first choice of what to do, but my husband and I, we are one, and I just bless God that even in his absence, you know, I can just pick up the baton and run. It's not easy to pick up the baton and run um, with handling the boys, but I just thank God that he'll be home soon and very soon, and um you know, Revelation Church, we're, we're just going to continue to move. And I just thank God just for everything that he's illuminated in his word tonight. Um, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to move into our offering to our Facebook family. If you want to give and sow into Revelation Church, hit us on Cash App. We're Cash App friendly. It took me forever to get used to Cash App. It just took me forever to get used to Cash App. But our Cash App is dollar sign. Rev, R-E-V, Church, V-A, as in Virginia. So dollar sign, Rev, Church, V-A. And I just bless God. We just love you to our Facebook family. We thank you um, for being with us, for being a part of us, our family and friends that are out of town that are able to join us here at Revelation Church. Even though they're not in the area, it just means so much to have your love and your support. And I just bless God for this word. And I just thank God that throughout this week, I just pray that something that was spoken will just come back to your mind and come back to your mind so that you can know how to gird up in Jesus' name. Amen. You can go ahead and end that live. And we're going to move on um, with our offering here at Revelation Church.